Oh, welcome. I'm sitting here with Debbie Rochon. Uh, Debbie, the main guest of the film festival. And a cup of coffee. And a cup of coffee, of course. Cheers. Could yes, you, could sorry. You, no I was problem. enjoying the java. Okay. <laughs> could you introduce yourself to our uh, viewers? Okay, I am Debbie Rashawn. I have made over 200 movies as an actor. Um, I just directed my first movie, Model Hunger. Three movies, three will be at the festival this year. Um, one that showed last night, Nightmare Box. Tomorrow night will be Wrath of the Crows. And then on Sunday, Exhumed. And they're all highly unique movies and very original. That's why I'm here and that's who I am. Um, I've been in the business since the late 80s when I got my start um, in New York City working with Roberta Finley and um, Chuck Vincent, some of sort of the old school 42nd Street directors and stuff like that. And I've been working hard ever since. And it's starting to show. But that's okay. I'm okay with that. Well, that's your opinion that is starting to show. We, we, we don't see anything yet. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. But I'm getting, getting that lifestyle lift soon. 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 The movie will come that will pay me enough, you see. Soon. Later this year. Let's see what happens. Hey, but Debbie, you've played in over 200 movies. Do we still remember all of them? No. No. I have had a makeup artist say to me, uh, mention the name of a movie. Like, say... Um, I, I, I'm pulling one out of the air right now. It wasn't this movie, but, you know, um, American Nightmare, for example. And I was like, hmm, you know, that movie sounds really familiar. And the makeup artist said, dear, you were in that movie. So, I mean, yeah, it's, it's tough. The, the bigger movies, the movies that you either have a lead role or featured role or you spend a certain amount of time making the movie, you'll never forget mm -hmm. them. Um, because a lot of times, if you get along with the, the crew and the cast, it becomes like a family. You know, like I have a family in Italy and, you know, I'm all over the place. Um, England and, and certain groups of people I work with repeatedly. But um, some days when you're flown in to do one day, you know, one day of shooting, Maybe you don't remember everybody's names or the name of the movie, perhaps. But, um, you know, that's how it goes. I mean, it's like maybe 240 movies at this point. But that includes, like I say, you know, the, the times where you're in for one day. You know, you're only in for one day. Or, um, you know, the movies that you started out in where you had like one line or something like that. So you can't remember everything. Can you? No, I think, it, I think it would be impossible. Maybe I need to take uh, that mind course, you know, mm. they have on the internet where you could like get, improve your mind skills. Also, I had a, a brain tumor and that's the truth and I had it removed. Uh, it wasn't cancerous, but if anything, if I mess up at all, I always blame it on that. Mm. See, smart. Yeah, indeed. Mm -hmm. Hey, we're with over 200 movies. If I ask you, uh, of course, typical question, if I ask you what would be your uh, most memorable movie, not your favorite, mm. which one pops in mind? To a person watching it or to me? To you. Oh, boy. Ah, for s It's a real tough one because um, American Nightmare is right up there. That was the first movie I did with John Keyes, who also directed Nightmare Box, oh. played her last night. We made it in 2000, and the reason it was so amazing, it was because um, it was the first time that I was given a script, given a character that I had wanted to do for a really long time, an absolute psycho killer, female killer, and um, I, he just let me roll with it in almost every scene in the movie. It was designed by us, but it was improvised. So, I mean, it was so gratifying, and so many people liked the movie, even with the flaws that it may have. Um, it was his first movie. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot to be said for that movie, because, you know, I learned a lot, he learned a lot, and people still enjoy it, which I'm deeply grateful for. Mm -hmm. Color from the Dark was very special, because I got to know Yvonne Zucone, who's a director of Wrath of the Crows. Wrath is another great movie. Um, making Exhumed was, was amazing. I think any time you make a movie that... The director is not just a director, but he, act, you know, he actually has a vision, and you can tell, you can feel it. I think that right there just has like a really deep effect on you, and it reminds you why 
you wanted to get into film. And so when that happens to me, which is not that often, that's the ghost making the lights go up and down. Um, I've also done a paranormal movie uh, documentary, so they're coming to visit me. Um, I think anytime you work with a visionary, I think it, it just reminds you of um, why you do what you do. And when you see like a lot of the bad stuff you do, which wasn't from a lack of trying, <laughs> mm -hmm. it just never came together. Um, it just, it makes it all worth it, so. You've uh, also mentioned earlier during this conversation that you've directed your uh, first feature length, yes. Model Hunger. Mm -hmm. um, how was it for you to sit on the other side of the camera? Well, you know, I was no dummy. I surrounded myself with very smart people. So what I didn't know, they knew. Which was, you know, I knew a lot, but I didn't know even more. So I knew an awful lot about working with actors. Um, I do have an eye for composition, but I needed a cameraman that could talk to me about lenses. You know, I never went to school for um, camera work. So, you know, these things are, are very, very important. I could describe to him color schemes and lighting schemes that I would want. But um, to me, a, uh, an amazing director would be like, say, one that could actually create it himself if he needed to. You know, he would be working with a great lighting person or cameraman, but if he needed to, he could do it himself. These things I don't know how to do. I knew what I wanted look-wise. And so, you know, I, I did um, storyboards and everything was sort of like light-coded and color-coded. And, you know, in one of the, the lead actresses' homes, we bought this haze machine and it was very kind of muted colors and and there was this haze because she was this older woman where it always felt like there was not fog but dust in the air you know going over the light all the time um and in the other actress's um house it was very the lines were very straight and you know all the lines were very strong including you know her wardrobe and everything else and but there was it's all like you know go back to the character you know, that, that's always the answer. And I think David Lynch said it best, like when you're in trouble, when you wonder about something or second guess yourself, always go back to the original idea. And I think that that's what really helped me. But I had amazing actors. I had a, a, a dynamite script mm -hmm. that we just slightly changed. We changed some things in shooting, which is normal. Um, but, you know, we're editing it now and... Um, I think it's really special. It has something to say. It's not just a gruesome horror movie. You know, it does have uh, gruesome stuff in it, mm -hmm. but it it has a very it makes a very big statement about women. That either the killer is a woman, and she's been um, judged and thrown out of an industry because of her weight, and so much later on in life she becomes um, a killer, and of course there's a lot more to it than that. But that's sort of the bottom line. So, the, you know, while you can just watch it as a horror movie and enjoy it and enjoy all the action and everything, it, there's like a lot of stuff that it's saying throughout the movie. So that's what interested me because prior to that I was not going to direct anything. I thought, you know, if, if you're not the best... So I've seen too many bad directors. And that is why I never wanted to direct. It's not that I didn't think I could or I didn't necessarily want to. I thought, you know what? Nobody respects directors enough. And I do respect them enough to know that it's a very hard job. And so, but it did come together. And we shot it last year. And now we have gone to picture lock and now sound, color correction, music, and da 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 da. The premiere. Premiere yeah. here at the Butt Film Festival. 2014. 2014, if they will allow me. It would be wonderful. We'll see how that goes. I think that will be a uh, magnificent opportunity. But, um, there are uh, butts in it, too. Yeah, of course. Yes. <laughs> hey, but, uh, but does this uh, also mean that you're going to direct more movies in the future? 
Well, um, there's a couple of shorts that I'm going to do, but they're part of a series that I've already been involved with as an actor. So uh, one is um, a webisode series that has now been picked up for TV. And so the creator, who's a very good friend of mine, and we just like get along creatively, you know, like that. We're just on the same page. Um, he wants me to, you know, co-write, co-direct, or write and direct. I, I want to co with him because he's, you know, such a smart guy. So that's one project, but I don't really consider that, you know, too much of a directing uh, thing as much as a, a collaborative thing. Mm -hmm. And then there's an episode in Fear of series, also a webisode series, um, that are just like 10 minute shorts. So I came up with this idea and it's actually, um, I'll share it with you even though he'd probably kill me if he knew that I was going to share it with you. But if I have the time here, do I have the time to explain yeah. quickly? Yeah. Okay, so, so hopefully you, know, you find this interesting. But, and hopefully you won't make this before I do, but I'm going to very soon. Um, <laughs> but uh, myself and a friend of mine were doing a sci-fi movie, which I don't know if you have like sort of a sci-fi channel over here. And um, we were sitting in my trailer, like, because I'm union over there, so you get, like, a little thing they call a trailer. It's not like a, you know, um, movie star trailer. It's just, like, a little room. And so I dragged my friend in. He wasn't union, but I dragged him in. And um, for just some reason, we waited the entire day, and then we were kind of thinking to ourselves, you know what, it would be really nice if they pushed this to tomorrow, our scene. Because not only are we so tired now, but, you know, we, we uh, get paid again, you know, we're, as opposed to just for that day, because it was uh, just a one-day character. Um, so then we were sort of like fooling around and saying, you know, what if like we hid and they didn't see us in here, you know? But then we turned this into um, an episode for the In Fear of series called um, It's In Fear of Acting. So within the short, it's going to be two people in army gear in sort of like a trailer type of thing with all of their artillery. And the way they act and the things that they say, you don't know what's going on. You just see zombies outside and you think that they're being attacked by zombies and they're freaking out. And then, of course, the punchline is the door knocks, it's a director, you want it on set. So it's going to be like in fear of acting. We sort of turned that whole idea around. So I just gave the whole thing away. But it's, um, that's how we do it at the Butt Film Festival. We give everything away. But uh, yeah, so actually I'm going to shoot that in about two weeks from now. So Sounds magnificent. Yeah, copyright, cool. trademark. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. And but, about, yeah. uh, about the Bud Film Festival, you've been here for a couple of days now. How mm -hmm. are you experiencing the festival? I can't believe, and I mean this, it sounds so staged, but I cannot believe how nice everybody's been to me. I mean, uh, you know, Doreen, I mean, everybody. But if I say to Doreen, you know, I don't have a converter for my, my plug for my laptop. Within two seconds, she produces one, like out of thin air. It's just... Amazing, you know, I say there's no coffee maker in the room, which, you know, I don't ask for much, but coffee to me is like a staple. I can't do anything without it. And immediately there's like not just a little coffee maker, but a mega <laughs> mama coffee maker, you know, with like loads of coffee that I'll probably go through. Um, but just, just like the little things that matter, that little tiny silly things that are comfort things are just completely taken care of. And the, the respect for all art is something that I'm really digging about this festival that you don't see at a lot of festivals. It's a lot of meeting and greeting, which is important. There's nothing wrong with that. It's, it's very important. But it's a, a respect for poetry, respect for sculpture, respect for all kinds of, every kind of art. And to me, that's really where it's at. That reminds us, you know, exactly why the movies that they show here, they show. Because um, art is just a matter of taste. And the Butt Film Festival is just a matter of taste. The butt has taste. Remember that. A lot of taste sometimes, right? Magnificently spoken. I can't uh, 
Yeah, I, I agree. He has nothing left to say. One hundred percent. So taste the butt. That's all I want you to do. It's great. Great tasting. Well, thank you very much for your, for this interview. And thank for the, you and for the kind words, of course. Well, of course, and uh, spilling all my ideas. So, uh, but thank you, thank you for having me so much. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I'm so thrilled thrilled to be here. English is my first language, so I'm sorry it's tough for me. Thank you.